All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever it is, wherever you are, I hope you're having a good one. Uh, today we are going to be tying in Adam's Dry. Uh, a little bit of a variation on the one we all know and love at the moment uh, with the uh, grizzly and brown tail. Uh, we're going to use golden pheasant tippet. Um, reading some stuff in Midcurrent and Fly Tire magazine and it sort of indicated that the original pattern may well have been tied with that or was tied with that. Uh, to be changed uh, later on. I think it's quite a cool variation, so we're going to give that a go. Uh, beyond that, we're tying it on an Arex FW501 dry fly hook. Um, you can tie them as small big as you need to, but I'm um, filming on a size 12. Uh, body, we're using the Semperfly Kapok. Uh, awesome, awesome floating dubbing. Uh, if you can get your hands on it, well worth it. Uh, just using it in, believe it or not, the Adams colour. Uh, wings, just some. Uh, grizzly feather tips uh, from a hen neck and then for the hackle it's the classic mixed uh, brown and grizzly uh, saddle hackle from whiting uh, but we'll crack into it hope you enjoy it and I hope you find it a handy pattern cheers alrighty uh, thread today simplify nano silk uh, it's fantastic isn't it uh, using white and you're just going to get your thread base down uh, the on your on your hook. It's uh, nothing overly complicated or anything like that, but uh, just get that thread line, uh, thread base down. And you're just getting it into the just where you're at the top of the the bend of the hook. Once you're there, uh, easiest way just make a little V, your scissors, and slide it through. Put a bit of tension on the thread and it'll uh, cut right through. Now uh, it can be a bit difficult if you just try to snip it. All right, tail using the golden uh, pheasant tippets. Now a lot of feathers you'll uh, just pull it away from the stem. For these, if you want to keep that uh, black line all lined up and the black tips all lined up, uh, best thing you can do just get your scissors and there you go. You just want to poke them through. You only want about four or five. Doesn't need heaps, and snip them away instead. Uh, that'll keep it all uh, very much nice and lined up. Okay, from there we want to uh, measure it out. Uh, you want it about the same length as the hook shank, give or take. Handy thing is uh, that black uh, strip in the middle. It's kind of giving me my tying point, so I want to tie it in uh, just behind there. Just give it a little pinch and then just tie it on top. And just get it nice and secured in there. And then we're just going to snip away the tag ends. Right, next up, I like to tie the wings in. Uh, usually use a hen neck uh, to tie them. I've got a funny feeling this is actually from a, a cock rather than a hen, uh, just because the tips are quite a bit more pointed. Uh, I was in a bit of a mystery bag of goodies uh, that I got. Um, but it still works well as a fishing fly. Uh, the fish don't mind, so don't get too hung up on it. Um, but you want to find a couple that are about uh, the same, uh, same size and just pluck them away from the from the skin and then you're going to see they've got a natural curve uh, you want to get them back to back uh, so that the shiny side is in the dull side of the feather is out uh, just so that they uh, both curve away from each other uh, next up is uh, just getting the size right um, so I generally just pull a few feathers down um, or a few fibers of the feather down sorry just until you get a rough idea of where you are and you want it to be just a little bit longer than the gap of the hook. Cool, that looks in the vicinity of being about right. And then you're going to tie it in uh, around about two and a half to about that two and a half uh, eye lengths back. Now I like to pinch all those feathers there you can strip them away or you can just do a pinch sort of like a pinch tie I guess 
um, we're going to bring it up and through and you do this pretty similar to quill wings as well and just hold it really tight pinch the end and let it slide down or pinch the tip of your feathers and just hold on to those feathers and you're just going to do a couple wraps it can be a bit awkward I guess um, but you just want them secured in and then just wrap that back and trip away trip, trim away uh, the excess all right pull the towel up there Alrighty. all right next up you're going to want to get those wings standing up so just take them between your fingers pull them forward or pull them back sorry and get some uh, thread ties in underneath them that's going to get them sticking up Right, next we're going to do the dubbin, again kapok. Uh, Semperfly have worked out a whole bunch of ways to dye these really really well. Uh, my understanding it's quite a, a waxy material and can get uh, a few issues in getting colours to stick. Uh, but they've worked out the process, they look fantastic. Uh, it's a whole bunch of colours from naturals through the fluoro colours as well. Um, but this stuff floats amazingly. Um, I've heard stories of people uh, leaving some in a cup of water and it floating so weeks later uh, used to be used in uh, life vests or life jackets and boats as well so uh, anyway uh, you take a just a little pinch um, you can split the thread as well which um, apparently is a better way to do it um, but it does give you a bit of a fuzzy body I've found and I prefer it nice and uh, tight looking but it still works uh, really really well when you just double it on uh, as you would any other traditional dubbing um, but just keep building that body I know I've talked about this plenty in other videos but you just want to slowly build it up uh, the more control you have the easier you'll find it so don't have you know a foot of uh, thread out of your uh, time bobbin just inch at a time just make your way forward And just keep on going. And you want to sort of build up that tapered body. You know, give it that real, you know, buggy look. And you just want to go until you're about two thirds of the way. And give or take. And then we'll put just a little bit more in. Just a little bit. Cool. And then we'll move on to the hackle. Right, uh, onto the hackle. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky, but uh, hopefully I'll explain it in a way that makes sense. But the Adams uses a double hackle. It's got grizzly and brown. Uh, you're just going to tie them in initially, one at a time, to prepare them. You pull away some of the fibres from the stem, and I take it a little bit further uh, on one side of it, and the side that's going to be wrapped down uh, first. It just makes those first wraps a little bit easier. And you just want to tie in just behind uh, where that uh, first little uh, fiber of the heckle is. All right, just secure a couple in front of it there. And then just get it in. And just fold it back so it's uh, nice and secure and it's not going to slip out. Cool trim away the tag end and then take our grizzly get that up there now I like to tie this so that it is on uh, the opposite side of me of the hook or of the um, other feather so it just slots down uh, beside it there and just get it lined up nicely just again just use a little bit of a pinch wrap or just pinch it to hold it there rather and just get it in. sometimes you're going to trap the fibers of that wing but it's all right it's no biggie and just get that nice and secured and you want to try to have as smooth a thread base as you can we're going to tie the hackle in the smoother it is the nicer it'll look if you're not overly worried then don't worry too much and just trim away uh, again the uh, tag end Fun part, 
Uh, time to wrap the hackle. I like to bring one down first, usually the grizzly, just to make sure it's going to sit up nicely. Be a little bit fiddly here, you might lose a couple to not look too great, but you can trim them later. Now some people, they like to wrap it one at a time, I just like to do both, just, yeah, I find it works fine. Uh, and just touching wraps as you move forward, just so that brown wrap uh, is up against your last grizzly. And just keep going. You're going to catch a few along the way, but it's not the end of the world. Um, just keep going. Usually it's about three behind the wing. And if you've moved the wing forward, just pull it back. It's pretty easy. You can just keep going forward. And another three in front of it, give or take, till you get to the eye. And then tie the guy in. Snip it away. Last but not least, sorry, just knocked my uh, something off the table there. And there we go. A few whip finishes. Uh, you can put a little bit of adhesive glue head cement on there if you want. Usually I just do a couple wraps, it's fine. I've always found I've either lost it to fish or uh, the trees behind me before I've needed to worry about the uh, head falling off. Um, you can see there's a few bits and pieces sticking out. Uh, again, if you're worried about it, trim them away. It's not the end of the world. A couple at the back there as well. And there we have it. There we have it, the Adam's Dry Fly. Uh, classic for a reason, I think. That just catches fish everywhere. Again, mixing it up, we're using that golden pheasant tippet for the tail. Adam's Kapok dubbing, uh, which will just float forever. And Arex FW501 dry fly hook. Uh, the feather tips, or hen uh, neck feathers for the wings, or in my case, the, the cock neck. Uh, white Semperfly 30 denier uh, nano silk. And the brown and grizzly hackle. Again, it's an awesome fly. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of different variations around the world, uh, around the place. You know, from the irresistible to para atoms and a whole lot of others. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it helps. And uh, happy tying. Enjoy. Cheers.